Welcome, I'm Morris Mohammed, and you're watching the English news program on Somaliland National Television. These are the stories making headlines. Somaliland's House of Representatives holds voting session on rejected acts by the executive's branch of Somaliland's government. Minister of Aviation welcomes largest Dalo airline carrier to touch down in Somaliland. U.S. President speaks on consulting Congress on Syrian crisis. Somaliland's House of Representatives held a voting session on two acts that received amendments by the executive branch of Somaliland's government. Speaker of Somaliland's House of Representatives, Abdurrahman Abdullahi Irro, chaired the session. There were 42 parliamentarians in attendance. The first voting session was on the honorary affairs of the president, vice president, and parliament. 42 parliamentarians in attendance voted 32 for, 5 were against, and 4 abstained from voting. The speaker did not cast his vote. The second voting session was on the Lawyers Act of Somaliland. 21 parliamentarians voted for, 13 were against, whereas 5 abstained from voting. Both acts were passed at Somaliland's House of Representatives. Minister of Aviation and Air Transport Mahmoud Hashi Abdi held a press conference at Egal International Airport on the landing of Dalo Airlines' largest carrier. The Minister of Aviation stated that this is proof to the great effort taken to renovate, reconstruct and strengthen the runways. He continued to add that Egal International Airport has undergone significant improvements, in particular the additional facilities provided to arriving and departing passengers. Minister of Aviation and Air Transport Mahmoud Hashi Abdi commended the support extended by funding partners as well as the Somaliland administration led by President Ahmed Silanio for their considerable role in ensuring Egal International Airport as well as other airports throughout Somaliland are comparable to international airports. The minister finally applauded Dalo Airlines for bringing their largest airline carrier to Hargeisa and expressed optimism towards future flights. This flight as well as previous flights such as the Ethiopian airline Boeing 783 are a testament to the progress and development Somaliland's aviation sector has made. Chairman of Somaliland's Civil Service Commission held a seminar for Director Generals as well as Directors of Independent Agencies. The chairman, Nuh Sheikh Musa Duale, opened the conference with initial remarks. He stated that it was a great opportunity for him to be able to meet with these pivotal government figures and provide them with further training. The chairman stated that this training would prompt productivity even more throughout governmental institutions and this administration is focused on doing and producing better results for Somaliland citizens. Chairman Nuh Sheikh Musa Duale informed the Director Generals and Directors of Agencies that the training is essential and through a consultative live manner the exchange of ideas are welcomed and encouraged. This is not the first meeting of its kind. On the contrary, Somaliland's government continues to hold meetings between governmental and non-governmental institutions for the ultimate betterment of the nation. You're still tuned into the English news program on Somaliland National Television and now for the international headlines in detail. U.S. President Barack Obama is facing an uphill struggle to convince Congress to back military strikes against Syria in response to last month's alleged chemical weapons attack near Damascus. U.S. President Barack Obama is facing an uphill struggle. His aides have launched a political offensive in the run-up to next week's debate as numerous lawmakers have begun voicing concerns. Texan Republican Michael Burgess said, Well, we heard a lot of information, a lot of pros and cons. I have to tell you, in my mind, it's far from settled. It's not something that should be undertaken lightly. I feel terrible 
about the chemical weapons that have been used. However, we know that chemical weapons have been used in other instances and we did not take military action. I am hoping to find an answer to the question. Is there any way to hold Assad accountable? This is what the international community wants to do, said Democrat Senator Janice Han. Meanwhile, in Cairo, a meeting of the Arab League has highlighted the divisions among its members. Saudi Arabia said that condemning Syria over a poison gas attack, which the U.S. claims killed over 1,000 people, was not enough. However, Egypt remained opposed to foreign military intervention. The final resolution urged the international community to take action against the Syrian government. Syria is able to confront any external aggression and U.S. threats will go unheeded, the words of a defiant President Bashar al-Assad during a meeting with Iranian officials. Syria is able to confront any external aggression and U.S. threats will go unheeded. President Obama's decision to consult Congress has also been described as an historic American retreat. Iranian lawmaker Aladdin Burjavadi warned that military aggression against Damascus would spread to the entire Middle East and burn it and before anything else it will threaten Israel's security. In preparation for possible airstrikes, the Istanbul-based Syrian opposition has claimed that the Assad regime has moved military equipment into civilian areas. Meanwhile, Assad supporters have organized a campaign for volunteers to form human shields at sites which are considered U.S. targets. Thanks for joining us. That's the end of our news. Take care.